this be one of the best moments of your life. You're listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business with Senior Editor Dennis Estopase. Good day. Welcome to Business Mondays with BM, a segment of the Business Mirror BM Broader Look Podcast that tackles the performance of the Philippine stock market. The Business Mondays with BM podcast is based on the stock market outlook story today for January 18 to 22 by Business Mirror reporter VG Cabuag and comes out every Monday. For the text version online, please go to the Business Mirror website and search for Stock Market Outlook. For the print edition, please go to the company section of the Business Mirror newspaper. Let's get on with the story. Share prices fell last week as investors were more cautious due to issues hounding government's importation of coronavirus vaccines and also on growing fears that a stricter lockdown may be implemented to contain the spread of the new COVID-19 variant that has reportedly entered the country. The benchmark Philippine Stock Exchange Index dived 51.42 points to close at 7,238.46 points. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index started the week up. However, it started to decline on Tuesday after failing to break the 7,300 resistance level. The index then continued to move sideways until the end of the week as investors took a wait-and-see attitude until economic activity can justify current blue-chip valuations before buying any higher. Christopher Mangun, research head at AAA Securities Incorporated, said that volatility on blue chips continued to die down with the investors focusing on highly volatile and speculative third-liners. Mangun said there were expectations of a sell-down after reports came out that the new COVID-19 variant was detected from a traveler that recently returned to the country. However, Mangun said this was not the case as most investors have already factored in the possibility of this happening. Foreign investors remained net sellers at 216.18 million pesos while average value of trade reached 9.95 billion pesos. A working paper by the ASEAN Plus 3 Macroeconomic Research Office or AMRO said that the emerging market economies of Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam have not seen their stock market indices recover to around the February level at end September last year. The AMRO paper said all these markets first had a rapid plunge from mid-February to late March, similar to the United States market. However, their subsequent recovery was weaker than that in the U.S., according to the AMRO paper titled Impact of COVID-19 on ASEAN 5 Stock Markets. The AMRO paper said some attributed this to the changes in global risk appetite towards emerging markets, even though the regional authorities have put up several rounds of substantial packages to support their economies, including extremely easy monetary measures and huge fiscal spending. The paper provides empirical evidence for the impact from the COVID-19 pandemic on the stock markets in the ASEAN 5 region composed of Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. The AMRO paper said that on the daily stock returns from the beginning of 2020 to end September 2020, the dynamic panel regression results show that the global COVID-19 development has a larger impact on ASEAN 5 stock markets than the local COVID-19 situation, while the global COVID-19 development could further dampen the performance of ASEAN 5 stock markets through the spillover from the U.S. stock market shock. On the volatility, the COVID-19 does not have significant impact in general except the U.S. stringency, the AMRO paper said. Other sub-indices ended mixed with the broader All Shares Index declining 11.79 points to close at 4,342.48 points. The Financials Index rose 8.08 to 1,495.45. The Industrial Index fell 113.14 to close at 9,479.01. The Holding Firms Index shed 51.10 to 7,371.35. The Property Index lost 90.20 to close at 3,694.82. 
the services index increased 18.28 to 1,558.56, and the mining and oil index retreated 40.93 to close at 9,948.66. For the week, gainers managed to edge losers 140 to 95, and 23 shares were unchanged. The top gainers were Basic Energy Corporation, Metro Alliance Holdings and Equities Corporation A and B shares, TKC Metals Corporation, Premier Horizon Alliance Corporation, Millennium Global Holdings Incorporated, and Trans Pacific Broadband Group International Incorporated. The top losers, on the other hand, were AC Energy Corporation, Philippine Bank of Communications, Penguet Corporation A and B Shares, PTFC Redevelopment Corporation, Primex Corporation, and Dito CME Holdings Corporation. This week, share prices may move sideways to a decline as pandemic worries heighten with a new COVID-19 variant confirmed to have been already in the country. This report could fan fears of another hard lockdown in key cities. Jafet Luis Tanchanko, a senior research analyst at Field Stocks Financials Incorporated, said that on the other hand, COVID-19 vaccine narratives, primarily those which would point to a rollout in the Philippines soon, may spur optimism. Tanchanko said investors may also look towards the upcoming foreign trade data of the Philippines for clues on the local economy's condition relative to its trading partners. According to Tanchanko, the Philippine Stock Exchange Index may test its 7,150 to 7,200 support range. If it falls below this, its next support is at 6,900, Tanchanko said. The local market's current resistance is at the 7,400 to 7,500 range, Tanchanko added. Meanwhile, Mangun said investors are comfortable with current blue chip valuations but are hesitant to buy any higher until more signs of economic recovery come to light. The trade data for the month of December and gross domestic product figures for the fourth quarter are scheduled to be announced this week. Mangun said they expect imports as well as exports to continue to decline after peaking back in September. Mangun added they also expect gross domestic product growth to remain negative, coming in between negative 7% to negative 8% year-on-year for the fourth quarter, which would amount to a 9% contraction to a 10% contraction for the full year of 2020. Mangun said they believe that this contraction, if already priced in by the market, however, could still lead to a pickup in selling. For the stock picks, broker Regina Capital and Development Corporation gave a buy rating on the stock of All Home Corporation after the company quickly recovered from the devastating effects of the lockdown. While the pandemic hammered down on the sales of All Home Corporation during the height of the country's community quarantines in 2020, the rebound thereafter quickly brought the firm back to pre-pandemic levels, Regina Capital said. The broker said it expects positive sales and earnings for the company this year, possibly even a double-digit same-store sales growth due to the low base effect of last year's weakness and the well-positioned store network. Regina Capital gave a 12-month target price on the stock at 11 pesos and 20 centavos per share. The shares of All Home Corporation closed at 9 pesos and 15 centavos apiece on Friday. Meanwhile, Regina Capital advised to take profits on the stock of Globe Telecom Incorporated after its share price hit its four-month high last week as its indicators have just started to turn bullish. Do note, however, that momentum is starting to weaken, the broker said. Regina Capital said that all signs point to a possible pullback but consolidation at a higher range is likely. A new support could possibly form at 2,050 pesos, the broker said. The shares of Globe Telecom Incorporated closed last week at 2,100 pesos apiece. And now for the weather. Government weathermen forecast that except for Visayas and Mindanao and parts of northern Luzon, the country will have generally fair weather apart from light rains or localized thunderstorms today until tomorrow. Throughout January 20 to January 22, the whole country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers. 
according to the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA. Thank you for listening to the Business Mirror Podcast. For a broader look on business, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Business Mirror. Until next time.